Jesus spent about 70% of his ministry in the area that surrounds this beautiful lake. The Galilee region saw the majority of his time and was where he performed most of his miracles. His most famous sermons were preached on the shores of this lake and today to visit this area is special. This lake has not moved and we can know for sure that this was where Jesus preached, where he healed and where he taught. This day was like no other and Jesus has spent the majority of his time teaching the multitudes by the shores of these waters. As the evening came after a long day of ministry, Jesus and his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and pushed off to shore. As they got on, Jesus soon found a bench or something similar and lay down and was soon fast asleep. As can happen on this lake, suddenly the waves whipped up and the water turned rough. Many of the disciples were able seamen and a few waves wouldn't scare them, but these waves got bigger and the wind got stronger and soon water was coming into the boat, yet Jesus still slept. Absorbed by their own efforts to save themselves, they forgot that Jesus was on board. Then they came to Jesus and cried out, Master, Master, we are perishing, save us. Never did someone utter such a prayer and Jesus ignored their cry. Seeing their scared and troubled faces, Jesus was no doubt filled with pity, but these were his disciples. They had seen him perform miracles and they knew the power that attended his work and theirs. Jesus then stands up and rebukes the wind and says, peace, be still, and immediately the lake returned to calm. The storms cease, the waves stop, the clouds disappear, the air is still. Jesus then rebukes his disciples and says, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Jesus wanted them to have faith and trust in his protection. They had never seen power on this scale before. Maybe they trusted in their own ability and skill to handle a vessel and that's why they didn't cry out in faith first. Sometimes in our area of expertise, we are less inclined to trust God and only after we fail first do we cry out to God for help rather than at the start. Watching this display of divine power, they marveled and asked, who is this that even the winds and waves obey him? Jesus who created the world has the power to control the elements and the disciples saw this firsthand. Jesus who calmed the storms has the power to calm the storms in your life today. Do you feel troubled by doubts? Do you feel burdened by circumstances that you cannot control? Do you feel tossed about in the storms of life and able to get a handle before another problem occurs? Do you see dark clouds above you, winds all around you and waves beneath you? Let me assure you that when you cry out to Jesus, Lord save me, as did his disciples, that he always hears and answers that prayer.